Hello my dear budding doctors, I welcome you all to my YouTube channel and Medicos Notes. So this will be the second part of the breast or mammary gland. In this part we will deal the blood supply, the lymphatic drainage and the applied anatomy of the breast. So let's get started. The first one is the arterial supply. So the internal thoracic artery which is a branch of subclavian artery through its perforating branches it provides arterial supply to the breast. So internal thoracic artery which is a branch of subclavian artery through its perforating branches it provides arterial supply so you can see this is the internal thoracic artery okay these are the perforating branches of internal thoracic artery so these perforating branches of internal thoracic artery provides the arterial supply to the breast next one is the lateral thoracic artery superior thoracic artery and acromiothoracic artery which are the branches of axillary artery so these branches of axillary artery provide arterial supply to the breast so you can see this is the axillary artery this one is a superior thoracic artery next one is acromiothoracic artery and this is the lateral thoracic artery so these branches of the axillary artery also provide the arterial supply to the breast and the third one is a branch of posterior intercostal artery so you can see here these are the branches of posterior intercostal artery so these branches of posterior intercostal arteries also provide arterial supply to the breast okay now let's move on to the venous drainage the first point is that the veins converge towards the base of the nipple from where they form anastomotic venous circle so an anastomotic venous circle is formed towards the base of the nipple by the veins okay that is the first point second point is that from there they run as superficial veins and deep veins so from there they run as superficial veins and deep veins third point is that superficial veins drain into internal thoracic vein and superficial veins of lower part of neck so the superficial veins they drain into the internal thoracic vein and superficial veins of lower part of neck and the deep veins they drain into the axillary veins and posterior intercostal veins okay so the deep veins drain into axillary veins and posterior intercostal veins so that's it for the venous drainage of the breast so the next one is the nerve supply of the breast. So the first point is that the breast is supplied by anterior and lateral cutaneous branches of fourth and sixth intercostal nerves. So the anterior and lateral cutaneous branches of fourth and sixth intercostal nerves, they provide nerve supply to the breast. Okay, that is the first point. Next point is that the nerve supply sensory fibers to skin and autonomic fibers to smooth muscles and blood vessels. So these nerves, they supply sensory fibers to the skin and autonomic fibers to smooth muscles and blood vessels. Okay, that is the second point. Now third point is that the nerves do not control secretion of milk. So the secretion of milk is not dependent on the nerve supply. Okay, so these are the nerve supply of the breast. Okay, now let's move on to the lymphatic drainage of the breast. Okay, now see the first point. Lymphatic drainage of the breast assumes great importance to surgeon because carcinoma of the breast spreads mostly along the lymphatics to regional limb nodes. Okay, so the carcinoma of the breast, it spreads mostly along the lymphatics. So it is of great importance to a surgeon. That is the first point. The next point is that the lymphatic drainage, it happens through two ways, limb nodes and lymphatic vessels. Okay, so first, let's see about the limb nodes the limb from the breast drains into the following limb nodes so there are certain group of limb nodes and the limb from the breast they drain into the following limb nodes first one is the axillary limb node okay it is of five it is of five groups first one is anterior group next is a posterior group lateral group central group and apical group okay and in this also the anterior group is the chief one because most of the limb from the breast it drains into the anterior group of axillary limb nodes okay so that is the first point next point is that these group of nodes they receive lymph from the breast either directly also indirectly also so these group of nodes they receive lymph from the breast either directly or indirectly that is the next point 
the next group of nodes is the internal mammary nodes okay internal mammary nodes is the next group of limb nodes and they lie along the internal thoracic vessels internal thoracic vessels so they lie along the internal thoracic vessels internal mammary nodes okay that is the second one and the third one is that some limb from the breast also reaches by the supraclavicular nodes cephalic node which is also known as delta pectoral node posterior intercostal nodes which lie in front of head of ribs and next through the subdiaphragmatic and subperitoneal limb plexus. Now see this diagram. These are the group of axillary lymph nodes. Okay, these are the group of axillary lymph nodes. This is the apical apical axillary lymph node. Okay, this is the lateral axillary one. This is the central axillary. This is the posterior axillary, and this is the anterior axillary. So these are the group of axillary lymph nodes. Okay, and this one is the internal mammary nodes. Okay, these are the internal mammary nodes and this one is the supraclavicular lymph nodes. Okay, these are the lymph nodes draining the breast. Okay, now let's move on to the lymphatic vessels. Lymphatic vessels are of two types, okay, superficial lymphatics and deep lymphatics. So the first is the superficial lymphatics. Superficial lymphatics drain the skin over the breast except for nipple and areola. So the superficial lymphatics, they drain the skin over the breast except the nipple and areola, okay. Next one is the deep lymphatics. They drain the parenchyma of the breast and they also drain the nipple and areola. So, the parenchyma of the breast along with the nipple and areola is trained by deep lymphatics. Okay, so that's it for the lymphatic vessels. Now, let's move on to some of the important points on lymphatic drainage of the breast. See the first point, it says that 75% of the lymph drain into the axillary nodes and in there mostly they drain into the anterior group and partly into posterior and apical groups. Okay, next 20% drain into to internal mammary nodes and 5% into posterior intercostal nodes. So 75% of the limb drain into the axillary nodes and in there mostly they drain into the axillary anterior group and partly into the posterior and apical groups. 20% to the internal mammary nodes and 5% to the posterior intercostal nodes. Okay. Now these limb from the anterior and posterior group. Okay. Anterior and posterior group of axillary lymph nodes. They pass to the central and lateral groups. Okay. They pass to central and lateral groups and through them to apical group. Okay. Through from central and lateral group they through them they pass to the apical group and finally it reaches the supraclavicular nodes so these limb from the anterior and posterior group of axillary limb nodes finally reaches the supraclavicular nodes this is the first point now let's move to the next point the internal mammary nodes drain limb not only from the inner half of the breast but also from the outer half as well so the internal mammary nodes drain limb from the inner half of the breast and also from the outer half of the breast okay so that is the second point third point is that the plexus of limb vessel present deep to the areola is called subareolar plexus of sape so what are subareolar plexus of sape the limb vessels present deep to the areola is called subareolar plexus of sape now, these subareolar plexus of sape along with most of the limb from the breast, okay, along with most of the limb from the breast, they drain into anterior group of nodes. So, the subareolar plexus of sape along with most of the limb from the breast, they drain into anterior group of axillary limb nodes, okay. So, that is the third point. Next point is that lymphatics from deep surface of the breast, they pass through the pectoralis major muscle, clavipectoral fascia to reach the apical nodes and internal mammary nodes. So how the lymphatics from deep surface of the breast they reach, they pass through the pectoralis major muscle, they cross the clavipectoral fascia, then they reach the apical nodes and internal mammary nodes. So that's it for the lymphatic drainage of the breast. 
Finally, guys, we are moving to the applied anatomy of the breast. Okay, see the first point the upper and outer quadrants of the breast is a frequent site of carcinoma of the breast. So, the frequent site of carcinoma of the breast are the upper and outer quadrants. That is the first point. The next point is that it is more frequently seen in postmenopausal females due to lack of estrogen hormones. So, the lack of estrogen hormone is also an important reason for the carcinoma of the breast and is seen in postmenopausal females okay that is the second point now third point is that retracted nipple is a sign of tumor of the breast so retracted nipple can also be a sign of tumor of the breast okay see the fourth point self-examination of mammary gland is a only way of early diagnosis and appropriate treatment so self-examination by women is the only possible way of early diagnosis and appropriate treatment to the carcinoma of the breast okay the next point is that the obstruction of superficial lymph vessels by cancer cells may produce edema of the skin giving rise to the appearance like that of a skin of an orange and that is called pd orange appearance so due to the obstruction of superficial lymph vessels okay by the cancer cells they produce an edema in the skin of the breast so it gives appearance like that of a skin of orange and this is called the pd orange appearance okay this is the pd orange appearance of the breast so that's it for the clinical anatomy of the breast finally guys we have completed important 10 mark question the breast or mammary gland i hope you all understood if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comments below so that's it thank you bye bye